Okay, so this is 130.3, and it's a very difficult chapter. It's about Sturm's theorem. And certainly I go through the work. I put all the work down there for you for those students that want to, you know, so practice that theorem. What I want to do is go back to more basic things to do the problem. And knowing basic things is probably more important than knowing advanced things at this stage. So I do know it's a cubic polynomial. You know what? Maybe I should go to the whiteboard to talk about it. And as I go to the whiteboard... Um, I got to get this on my screen, by the way, because I got it. Otherwise, I can't remember what the problem is, believe it or not. And this is problem number one, right? And we're in the exercises. Let me get to the exercises. And I do a lot of work in the notes. The work I'm going to do now is at the whiteboard is going to be going back to more basic things. All right, we'll get the same ideas though. All right. Let me open. A, uh, let me close this one out for another session and let's write this down so number one and number one is f of x it's a polynomial it's cubic x cubed <coughs> plus 2x squared minus x minus one and it really you know the nature of the roots of it so i mean we've been doing these things for a long time now we have all kinds of techniques for solving it so looking at it probably the first thing i would do is um I would, I would definitely know that this is a cubic polynomial with a coefficient on the cubic term to be positive. So it looks sort of like this over here. Now, what I don't know is, I, I know there's a root. I just don't know the nature of the roots now, all right? So what I would do is probably use discard rule of sign, and let's put this down, plus, plus, minus, minus, s equals 1. So that means I get one positive root. I know that much. So one positive root. The next thing I would do, if there's one positive root, I might want to analyze this to see what's the nature of that positive root. Like, where is it? What, what values is it between? So I might use what's called the intermediate value theorem. And I might go f of 0. Well, that's easy. That's minus 1, right? It's negative. And then I might go to f of 1. At some point, it's going to overpower the negative number. And I'm trying to figure out what interval it's on. So what would you get over here? 1 plus 2 minus 1 minus 1, which is going to be what? 1. <clears throat> so what do I know? I know there's a root now between 0 and 1. So I know that much. I know there's one root there. Do I know what the root is now? No, but that's unimportant to me. What's important, I want to know. I'll go back and read the question to you. Determine the nature of the roots. All right, let's keep going. So let's do the rotation now. So let's do f of x. <coughs> let's do f of minus x. And I'm going to do the opposite of that because I want the same look to it. All right? The same look to it. Um, what I mean by that, I want this thing, when I rotate it, I, you know, this thing looks like this over here. If you rotate it, it's going to have the same look. All right? Let me get my eraser out, though. Well, you know what? I really don't want to do that yet. We'll do that a little bit later. And let's put this down, man. So what's f of minus x? So the negative roots become positive roots. And what do you get there? Uh, let's take a look. So what's f of x? I've got to remind myself. Oh, so it's going to be minus x cubed plus 2x squared plus x minus 1. So let's just look at the sign changes. And what are you going to get over here? Well, it's going to be negative, positive, positive positive, negative. So what are we getting? We're getting one change there, all right? And then we get another change over here. So S equals 2. So that means P could be 0 or P could be 2, all right? So the thing I know about this over here now is I know there's um, a possibility of two roots, negative roots now. So, you know, I'm going to play with it again. You know, going back to basic ideas, so I know it at zero, it's negative. And we've done this many times before. Then the big question is, what does it look like at one? I'm sorry, not one, minus one. Sorry about that. So I'm going to write that down. What, what does f of minus one look like? Now remember, it either has no roots or two roots. So at minus one, is going to look like one plus two minus one minus one, which is going to be one, which is positive. So I know what popped through. So now what do I know? I know there's a root. Right? I know there's a root between minus 1 and 0. 
So let's point this out again. I know there's a root. I'll list the roots down for you. I know there's a root x that's on the interval between 0 and 1. I know there's a root now between minus 1 and 0. Now, this is a cubic polynomial. I know it's going to come back down. I know that, right? The question is, when does it come back down? So I'm going to try to figure that out. So I'm going to put f of minus 2 now. And what's f? F's this thing over here, right? So it's x cubed plus 2x squared. Did I uh, do that before? Let me write that down. I'm sorry about that. I should write, I, I think I might have made a mistake over here. f of x. Let me write the problem down again. I might have spoke when I was looking at the wrong thing. Plus 2x squared minus x minus 1. I made a mistake here. Let's, let's do it again. What's f of minus 1? It's minus 1. I did make a mistake. Plus 2, plus 1, minus 1. What do you get over there? It's still, it's still positive. That's good news. So I, I, that, that doesn't change. Let's do f of minus 2. That's going to be minus 8. Let's see, plus 8, plus 2, minus 1. Well, that's still positive. It's right? still positive. But I know it's going to come back down. I'm just wondering when it's going to come back down. Let's go f of minus 3. What do you get over there? You get minus 27. Let's see, plus 18, plus 3, minus 1. And let's see what you get there. Oh, definitely negative. All right? So what do I know now? I know it's coming back down, going up, but it's coming back down between minus 2 and minus 3. Okay, I'll write that down for you. X is coming down between minus 3 and minus 2. So that's where my roots are. All right, let me get my eraser out. And I know the nature of the roots now. All right, so I know where they are. And someone says, could you find them? Whoops, sorry about that. Just give me a second. I used the SCART rule assign, intermediate value theorem, really all basic things. I'm not saying the theorems are basic, but what I'm saying is, like the SCART rule assign is not a basic theorem, nor is the intermediate value theorem. But, but it, it's, it's basic in its use. It's basic in its use. So now the, the big question comes is, you know, can you, can you figure out what the roots are? And, you know, looking at it, let me just take a look at it. And I'm trying to figure out, is there an easy way to get the root on that? And I don't know if they're easy to get. First of all, are they asking for it? And I got to read it over, see what they're asking for. Determine the nature of the roots. Well, I think I've determined the nature of the roots. I know approximately where they are. And there's one positive, two negative. I know approximately where they are. Uh, and we have ways of solving cubics, but they're really not asking us to do that. So this is efficient, all right? But again, let's go back to the um, actual key. And I, I do go, I go through Sturm's method. I find it to be tedious and difficult. There's no doubt about it. Um, I will say this, though. I think most algebra classes now would not go anywhere near Sturm's theorem. Um, I want to point out that I, I do some work over here. I also give a graph. And remember what we said about the roots. And the roots are as follows. I said there was one between 0 and 1, one between minus 1 and 0, and the other one was between minus 2 and minus 3. The y-intercept, really kind of simple. Uh, I did basic sign analysis on it. What, it. what I mean by that, you know, kind of looking at the curve, you know, basic sign analysis, something like this over here. And we did talk about that shape. The thing about this one, you could use, uh, you know, more information. You could certainly solve for these roots. Well, we've done that for cubics before. That requires more work, and we've done sections like that. You could also do the local max and the local min, Certainly the y-intercept as well. You could also do the point of inflection, by the way, all right? But we're just doing the nature of the roots. We found them right there, right there, right there. Thank you.